Hey guys, today we are checking out this multimeter. It's called, uh, where's the name? Where's the name? KKM828. So it's a graphical multimeter with an oscilloscope. In the back, you will find the device inside a carrying pouch as well as uh, some test leads, testing probes over here, and user manual. And let me just show you how small is this device comparing to um, the cheapest and smallest one that I could find. This is just a few bucks. And this is a multimeter that I've been using previously. So you can see that this device is smaller. The display is smaller. It's much thinner. Uh, also, there's uh, there are no batteries in the device uh, included, but you, there's a flap over here, and you need to provide your own um, uh, AA uh, batteries, three of them. So that's it. And right now, let's check how this works. I will try to guide you through some of the features. I don't know them all because I'm not a professional electrician, but we'll try to use uh, this device in Goldmark 7 just to test various things and uh, we will see how the oscilloscope function uh, works uh, because that's the most interesting one for me. And I will try to show you how to use it when diagnosing a car. Okay, so let's go to the car and let's set it up. So let's start with something simple. I have those test probes connected to the communication and the uh, voltage uh, uh, inputs over here. So let's set the control wheel to the voltage section, not the millivolts, but the volts. We have the uh, initial readouts or readout of zero volts because I'm not connected to anything. And we have auto range, which means if the uh, measured voltage is uh, higher than 9.999 the decimal point will uh, go to the right and we will have um, less precision but we can measure higher voltages and you can of course use the r button like range to switch between the auto range to manual selection of the decimal point so let's maybe select something like this two digits before the decimal point and we can now check the uh, battery voltage over here. So let's leave the um, uh, leave the multimeter over here and let's uh, test the car's battery. Twelve point three one. Maybe it's not the best condition, but we have the readout. And right now I'm using different probes with a crocodile clip so I don't have to uh, hold the uh, test probes near the battery and I'm going to enter the pH function with F2 and this will show us the maximum and minimum voltage while the uh, measurement is performed and right now I'm going to start the engine for a few seconds and we will see how low the voltage drops while the engine is cranking and how high the voltage gets when the engine is actually running. Few seconds, maybe a little bit of revs and turn it off. And let's check the readout. Okay, and right now we have 12 13 it's lower than before because i've uh, cranked the car and it uh, was running only for a few seconds but we can see that the minimal minimum voltage was 877 which is pretty low this battery might need to be replaced or charged properly and the maximum voltage was 14.55 which means that the alternator is actually charging the battery if we let the engine to be running Okay, so let's perform another test. And right now I have it set to Hertz and percent and we are going to check signal frequency and signal duty cycle. So we will see um, the frequency in Hertz and duty cycle in percent. And I have those uh, leads hooked up to the uh, vacuum controller. It's a vacuum valve that controls the um, a turbocharger in this car and once I turn on the ignition we will have 
some readout over here. So let's turn on the ignition. And we can see that this signal is um, at frequency of 305 hertz. And if we change to duty cycle, we can see that the uh, duty cycle is at 5%. And right now, just to show you how this looks on oscilloscope, let's go back to volts. And when I press and hold R, we are in oscilloscope view. So we can see those spikes. And this is how the boost control signal looks right now when the ignition is on and the engine is off with the turbocharger ready um, uh, for the engine to start. Okay, so let's uh, maybe start the car and let's check how this signal looks during the engine crank. Let me just hold the device in my hand. Okay. We can adjust the time period over here because on this 10 by 10 grid we can see that we have 10 grids and each grid is 5 milliseconds and if we select the F1 to adjust the time we can see those spikes at greater resolution. And we can also adjust the range. Let me just browse through it and this is how the signal looks in detail and right now i'm connected to the footwell light and i'm measuring i'm measuring volts we can see that the footwell light is, is powered by 9.2 close to 9.2 volts but in fact i know um, that it's powered with a pwm signal so if we switch again to the hertz we can see that the signal is at 200 Hertz and the duty cycle is 77, 78. So if you are just using a voltmeter, you will you would think that the voltage is 9 volts when in fact, when we switch to oscilloscope, we can see that those are 12 volt pulses with 75% duty cycle. So we have 75% of the time power on and 25% of the time Power off. I've adjusted the range, you can better see right now what's going on. Maybe let's adjust the time as well. Those are those pulses and when I close the door and the light will dim, you can see how this signal changes. So right now let's check the resistance measurement and we'll check if the glow plug is any good on this engine. I have the glow plug cap disconnected and I have one of the leads connected to the ground connection in this car. I've set the, um, uh, the multimeter to the resistance and uh, right now it's in auto range, but we can set it to manual range, the, the uh, highest resolution, the smallest readouts. And if I touch the uh, glow plug tip with uh, this uh, probe, we will have the readout, of course. So let's try to do it. One more time. It's 2.3, but this readout, uh, readout is not the resistance of the glow plug, but of our measurement circuit, including those test probes. So if I touch together those test probes, like I'm doing right now, we can see that 1.6, 1.7 is the leads resistance. So right now I can press the relative function and this will subtra subtract the readout from the leads alone. And when I again touch the uh, glow plug tip, if I manage to do it, we can see that the glow plug alone has a resistance at 0 0.6, 0 0.7 ohm. Now let's try circuit continuity. So let's set it to it and let's select. We are in resistance right now. Let's go to continuity. And if you touch together those probes, you can hear a beep. 
which means that there's a path between those two. And this is great for um, uh, searching for ground connection if you are, for example, trying to hardwire a dashcam or um, something else, some third party accessories in your car. So let's look for ground connection, for example, between the between the 12 volt outlet, which is over here. I'm touching one of the probes to the um, to the body of the 12 volt outlet, and I'm looking for ground. And we can hear the beep, which means that there's ground connection over here as well. On over here, not over here. There's ground over here, and so on. So right now let's check amp consum consumption. I have uh, the multimeter set to milliamps and I've switched the um, uh, probe to the milliamp uh, output over here. I've removed the fuse that's responsible for the 12 volt outlet and instead, um, instead of passing the um, power through the fuse, I'm going to pass it through the multimeter which will show us the power consumption of this of this phone charge charger which I have over here and then I'm going to also switch to the oscilloscope view just to see if the um, if the amp readout is available also in a graph form and now let's set it up to the oscilloscope view Mm, let's set time grid uh, to something higher, like one second per grid. So we will have 10 seconds through the screen and the uh, range, maybe let's leave it at uh, 100 milliamps per grid. We can even press S to stop it and to inspect this graph later on with the leads disconnected. And another cool feature that I uh, found over here is the readout memory. You have a database of uh, 100 readouts. So when I measure, for example, the battery voltage, you can press S to capture this, this readout. And when you long press S, you are entering database and you can browse it select a spot let's select spot number two i see it's uh, empty and let's press f4 for save and we have saved this readout for later comparison we have some um, resistance uh, um, resistance measurement over here another voltage measurement you have a hundred free spots to uh, fill with the data that you are collecting Okay, as usual, let's finish the review with pros and cons and my personal feelings. So first of all, I love the oscilloscope function over here. I've never used one, to be honest, and uh, I think that it's very useful. I know where to use it for. The PWM signal checks are very interesting for me and for anyone who is interested in controlling LEDs. And also I like the small factor, small form factor comparing to, comparing to my previous multimeter um, and the 100 uh, entries for readout, uh, readouts, 100 entries memory database is very cool. Auto range function works uh, cool but you don't need to use it, you can set it manually if you want it. There's an automatic sleep function so if you don't uh, use it for 15 minutes if you, and you leave it on it will turn off automatically. Also, there's a safety reminder if you are measuring, um, for example, high voltage in your uh, power outlet, in your office home or whatever, it will beep a sound and there will be a small lightning in the corner of the screen reminding you that you are, you are working with high voltage and you need to stay extra safe. And what's else over here? There's a lot of advanced uh, advanced features which I still have to learn how to use, so I'm not going to show you 
how to use them but uh, in the description below this video you will find more detailed technical specification of this device and so you can check if it will fit your needs uh, so that's uh, that's uh, on the pro side and when it comes to cons my only complaint is the battery i need to provide three AA batteries and i would love if it's uh, had a built-in battery and a usb port to charge it up it would be just so much more convenient for me but still i've been using it for a month maybe a month uh, not every day of course and the battery uh, lasts last this uh, this whole time uh, what's else in the description below this video not only the technical specification is there for you also a link to tomtop website which provided this device for me full disclosure this is not a pro paid review paid promotion but i did got this for free so just so you know i uh, um, i didn't pay for it but they also didn't pay me to do this to make this review also i've been using some of my own test leads those are the one that that are included in the set you will find them in the box and i've been using some of my custom made ones and crocodile clips as well it's just a little bit more convenient to work in the car with uh, crocodiles uh, crocodile clips for me okay that's it for today thank you for watching i hope that you like this uh, simple review and how to video of um, basic stuff that you can check in your car um, give me a thumbs up if you like this and subscribe for future ones see you soon